Greetings everyone, I'm Andy Epics here and welcome back to Real Launches. I know it's been a while since I did one, but uh, there haven't been many launches and the ones that have been, uh, have happened, I've been away uh, for various reasons for. But today we have a special uh, vehicle, Atlas V 541. Now this is the fourth flight of this particular Atlas configuration, and this time it's launching a weather satellite, Goes R. Latest American uh, weather satellite. So it's uh, going to lift off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on Saturday, I believe, the 19th. And it's going to take a southeasterly heading away from the launch pad to put GOES R on a geostationary transfer orbit. Solid rocket boosters will burn out about two and a half minutes into the flight. They will separate from the vehicle in groups of two. Having separated from the launch vehicle, it will then continue on its flight. Burning booster propellant. until uh, the core stayed. The payload fairing will separate before the booster burns out. Because the payload fairing, uh, because underneath the fairing is the centaur stage. After the payload fairing separates, the forward load reactor will jettison. These two events occur, and then the next major flight milestone after that is uh, Atlas Centaur separation. I know this is a bit of a change from the last few episodes I've done, which have been mainly realism overhaul. From the last few videos I've done, which have been for the real space program, with uh, potential launch vehicles. And we have burnout. AC sap. Um, dot dot dot. Uh oh. That wasn't supposed to happen. when the staging screws up.
we'll try this again. Um, but the last Atlas V, uh, the last time an Atlas V launched in this configuration was 2013 or 2014, I believe, that carried... Um, I think it was NRO L67 or 61 I or 60 uh it was NRO it was either NRO L35 or NRO L67 But anyways, here we go again. Let's beat it up this time for you guys because you've already seen it happen. You've already seen it fly once up to EC7. See burnout. AC sap. And Centaur engine start and CES. So then the next major flight milestone is Seco 1. I'm just tweaking the orbit a little to make it seem more, uh, not like an idiot was flying the rocket.
I have gotten quite good at flying in realism overhaul. Um, after MechJeb's given me my initial launch stuff. And then, after a while, a good coasting. Then, after a long coasting period, Now I have to do this in the in this game. And after a bit of a coasting period. Atlas will, uh... Fire up the Centaur engine for the second, uh, burn. Putting Gozar onto a geostationary transfer orbit. As you can see, we're doing it on the dark side of Kerbin here. So we're in the second centaur burn now, establishing its geostationary transfer orbit. Moving it from the circular uh, low, Kerbin, low Earth orbit, in this case Kerbin orbit, to the elliptical uh, transfer orbit. At the altitude where most geosynchronous satellites reside, geostationary, correction, satellites reside, um, Centaur is going to or, um, not Centaur. The onboard payload, onboard uh, engine for Gozar will fire itself up to insert it into its, uh, Geosynchronous, geostationary, geosynchronous orbit. Not sure which one it is. All I know is it's one of the two. Preparing for Miko. Preparing for Mez 3, or Mez 2. Preparing for Miko 2. There we have Centaur with Goes R on its geostationary transfer orbit.
At this point, I'm unclear if ULA plans to do a second uh, Centaur, third Centaur engine burn at Apoapsis. So, the major milestone after the uh, ballistic phase will be Gozar separation. And the Centaur's ve fuel vent. Once it separates from the launch vehicle, it will begin a coasting period similar to that of uh, many other geosynchronous satellites. It will deploy its single solar array. Then begin coasting to Apoapsis, or Apogee in this case. Apogee for this mission th should be 35,786 kilometers. So, once it achieves its geostationary orbit, it will, uh, it will stay there providing forecasting for America, for the American government. As we prepare for the shutdown, and we have the GOES R engine shutting down. And we have it flip around so that its camera should be facing Kerbin. There we go. Rolling it onto a stable.
position. And goes R is on orbit. I just sort of stuck random experiments on here because there was no real weather camera. So for 